It's a cruel mistress. An evil one. <laughs> Ooh. Bit harsh. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, nil-nil. And I think we were lucky to have that many goals, weren't we? I think so, yeah. I think, um, yeah, we took all our chances at nil-nil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I got I mean, the weather's horrible. And the weather determined everything, didn't it? The weather decided the match. It was impossible to play football in it. Dagenham came on strong near the end, to be fair to them, and Reed had two good efforts, good saves by Leighton, but really, from the start, you were thinking, this is no nil. It's, it's a horrible game to watch. It was. It influenced the, the long balls and the high balls that you invariably yeah. get at this level. Um, when Wrexham did get it on the ground, which perhaps they should have done more of in hindsight, uh, technically-wise, we were better. We didn't create... Well, what, the one chance I can think of, Hooper in the first half with the tame header at the far post uh, that was easily saved by Justin. Mm. Um, we didn't create the chances. We looked, um, I can say we're an improved side. It's a better game than we've certainly seen this season at times. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's one of those. It was It's, it's frustrating, but it's a, po it's a positive, isn't it? It's uh, two wins on the bounce and a, and a draw. I, these are the games, unfortunately, with teams around you you want to be winning, though they, they make the real difference on climbing the table. Oh, massively, massively. This and Chesterfield next week were, were big moments, and, the, and it has hurt us badly, hasn't it, that, that we've struggled against the teams around us. But this wasn't a case of that. This was a case of the win just destroyed the game from the start. It was really hard to get the ball down. Uh, it's just a hideous game to to watch, but also to play in, I'd have thought. Yeah, I mean, hindsight and tack in the, uh, the Rex Rent stand... Uh, the wind was really against us and made a difference whereas in the first mm. half we didn't notice as much I think we we were the better team in the first half and we played the balls uh, with the wind uh, and looked a more comfortable team I think once we tried doing the same in the second half we really saw the, the impact yeah. I thought we became a bit too obsessed of the idea that we're playing against the wind and we can knock it in behind their defence and Hooper can run onto it and it didn't work but I think we tried it a bit too much we didn't get the ball down enough to, to move it about yeah and by doing so I, th I said it in commentary um we sort of isolated Jarvis out of the game uh, yeah. and he once he got on the ball particularly in that first half looked to be the one that was mm -hmm. was going to um, to bring it down and uh, and perhaps be the, the get off the the key pass we needed yeah absolutely um the other the key thing as well is that yeah Thompson at wing back is clearly a center back and he wasn't comfortable on the ball and as a result of that when we a half time but Jarvis looked nice in the first half when the second half he switched sides of Rutherford he was he had Thompson uh, behind him and Thompson wasn't able to feed him at all and Jarvis just disappeared out of the game whereas Rutherford was very busy because Jennings until he was injured had a very good match I thought and was feeding him well hello Griffo I'm assuming that's your teacher nickname <laughs> I prefer Griff, but nonetheless, <laughs> Griffo will do. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Griff. <laughs> uh, don't you think that was a repeat of the old shot? In my opinion, the conditions did not help. We covered the conditions. I don't think it was anywhere near the repeat of older shot. Older shot was up there with the worst footballing game I've witnessed. Um, yeah, we were, we were just shocking against yeah. Aldershot. I mean, it was a dreadful performance, absolutely absent performance. Yeah, whereas um, today I don't think that was the case. It was yeah, hampered weather. by the weather, but... Yeah. It wasn't the best performance. It wasn't the most, but there was there was energy there. There was, there was. You could see where the play was designed and what mm. we were trying to do. It just didn't come off. And unfortunately, where we are this season, it's going to happen that way sometimes. The, the, yeah, the, the change in attitudes in the crowds at the moment. When the final whistle went, as I said in the commentary, one bloke in the back row here booed, and that was it. Yeah. And the rest, there wasn't much applause either. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't really applaud much apart from the effort, but I think everyone here appreciates it, unlike earlier in the season, that the players had given their all and the weather just made it impossible to, to play football. Yeah. Um, there were moments of frustration from the crowd, but they were just understandable moments because we just couldn't, we couldn't play in this. I think going to forward, that's important because you need that, you need yeah, that crowd behind absolutely. you. Absolutely. We are where we are. It's, it's been nice to get a couple of wins on the bounce. Mm. And it's nice to start, you know, having that conversation. Perhaps oh, we're only nine points behind the playoffs and all that sort of stuff. And listening down, just I just, I just popped downstairs to go to the toilet after commentary, and I don't know why I, I always go to the toilet in a Yorkshire accent for some reason. And um, <laughs> the attitude down there, the atmosphere was quite positive. Everybody's saying, "Well, you know, we'll take that." It's another clean sheet. I can see Danny Dyer there saying, "Good point here today," uh, from from his perspective, listening in in Plymouth. And yeah, uh, I mean. Much better if we'd won it, obviously, but I think that's that's reasonable. I think we've dug in, we've got a clean sheet, horrible conditions, 
at least we didn't fold and let a soft goal in from a set piece at the end. Well, I think um, just looking at some of these comments, uh, Jay Harris is a popular returning player. We did talk about halftime. He didn't join us for the halftime co podcast. We'll, uh, we'll have a chat about Jay Harris. Um, I mentioned he was my favourite midfielder for Wrexham, certainly in our non-league um, non team. I like a midfielder that's feisty, that battles, um, but also he's got, um, you know, he's technically quality as well. He's gone on and had a, a decent stint at Tranmere and, and done well there. And yeah, perhaps he's not going to be as, he's not the youthful Jay Harris that we, we remember. He is getting on to 33 in a couple of months, but he's still got um, that fire in his belly. He's still got, uh, quality on the ball and I think him and Luke Young will really make a great combination going forward. I can see Danny Dyer saying his dad's buzzing about the new signings um, and I'm sort of, I'll give him a shout out. Hello Peter Duckett. Hello you're, Peter. You're a, you're a good judge um, <laughs> but, but um, absolutely I, I think that Harris is a is a, is a fantastic signing really. It's been in the cards for a while I think to be honest but nonetheless that's a that's a terrific move to bring him in. The lighting does make uh, Mark look ill, unfortunately. Yeah, thanks, Super he's, Daniel Grangle. Yeah, he's he's perfectly fine. Don't worry, I'll work on it now. Um, it's it's just how he is. Yeah. Um. It's always I always look really washed out when we do these things since it's got dark. When it was when it was daylight, it was okay. So I don't know. Let's see if my lighting's might. Hopefully, I, hopefully you can catch me good side if I do that. Awesome. I can't see out of my left eye now, but don't worry about it. <laughs> as long as the lighting's good. Um, <laughs> Today was dreadfully slow on the ball. Hooper, Summerfield, and Rutherford all seemed uh, disinterested. Only positive for me was the new signs were decent. Um, I wouldn't have said they looked disinterested, in my opinion. But again, uh, everyone sees things differently. Uh, we were a little slow on the ball at times, but I think it was more that constant long ball, trying to play with the wind and trying to get it that way. Um, I thought Rutherford harried around as he always does and, and put some decent yeah. challenges. I think Hooper, in the first half, was fed decent service into the channels where he can affect. Um, and Summerfield tried to, to, to be positive on the ball, but yeah, you can get frustrated at times making those same runs all the time and not yeah. getting it, I suppose. Oh, Josh, I'll tell your dad you said that. I mean, come on, pal. <laughs> you can't say they, 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 they is it disinterested. They, yeah. they can't. I don't think you can say that. I think there was a lot of effort in there. So the conditions made it difficult. I mean, Rutherford's, you can guarantee he's going to be running around like a, like a lunatic. And I thought in the second half he was... He was quite busy and quite lively, partly because he was shifted over, like I said before, onto the side in front of Jennings rather than yeah. not. I mean, speaking of Jennings, that's probably the the obvious thing we need to discuss, really. Obviously, Mark Carrington, we assume missed from injury yeah, today. Yeah. There's, nothing, there's no word out on that, but uh, I'm surprised he's not in the squad. He's normally, uh, if available, uh, either on the pitch <laughs> or on the bench. So, obviously, he's missing it right back. Jordan Thompson has come in as a centre-half. Um, yeah, and he looked it, didn't he? And he yeah, yeah. Uh, he tried, he's got some pace, but he's a centre-half trying to play a, a wing-back and he wasn't sure 100% if he was to go forward, to stay back. Uh, so, yeah, there was a bit a bit sort of hit and miss on that. And then, obviously, Jennings gets injured late in that second half. We hope that's he did walk off the pitch and didn't look to be limping too bad. But then again, you don't know with those sort of injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, it's just more of a dead leg and he can't shake it off and it's only a, a temporary in injury. But then, if we're playing this wing-back system... We're um, a bit light on fullbacks now. We certainly are. Uh, Josh is coming back at us saying most of the time Rutherford uh, was had back to goal when he received the ball. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, doesn't mean he wasn't trying though, does it? And your dad said this too. I'll see him on Monday. I'll have words with him. Don't you worry. Danny Dyer, how was my man Luke Young? Points better than a loss. You play as exciting times. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, Young. Had one of his... I'm not going to say worst because that makes it sound like in a bad play, but he was not as consistent. He was not at the levels that we yeah. come to expect. His passing was a little bit off. Mm. Uh, he was caught um, wrong side a couple of times, but he was trying. The effort was there. He was trying to keep us on the front foot. And um, I think when Harris did come on, they pushed Luke Young forward, interestingly, into that, uh, into that role. I, I much prefer him in that deeper. I could see them as a pairing and then free up perhaps but even playing. Um, Kilo Dunn and uh, Jarvis in the same uh, in the same mm. side. Uh, yeah, Rutherford does have his his back to goal at times, but that's mainly because he's working for it and working the challenge. He does a lot of work off the ball and on the ball for other players. Um, his his scoring record isn't the greatest, and I think that's why is because he, he he does a lot of work for the team to to get there. So I think it's harsh yeah. to to criticise him too much. I think he I th yeah. I'd rather have 
that, particularly in the situa situation when we're in, we need play players giving 100%. Yeah, I thought Young did okay. Uh, you know, like the, the, I, I don't want to make excuses all the time, but the conditions meant that the quality was down compared to normal. So Young was still all right. He was still very competitive in, in midfield, and he tried to drive play forwards. Um, but it was harder today than than it was on a nice synthetic surface last Saturday. Uh, I think Harris was put in deeper. I don't know. If, I'm interested to see if that's where. Keith sees his role I, I suspect not I think it was because we went from three to four at the back and yeah. so he wanted that cover in front of them to try and get players forwards and try yeah. and support uh, Hooper more I and think. Young and Summerfield were in the games and knew yeah. that, uh, so it, it made sense yeah Kev H summons it up uh, in two sentences it's better than a loss not mm. as good as a win yeah we can't argue with that I like that yeah. I, like, I really like that uh, Dare to Dream you should be commentating on Sky Sports <laughs> have you noticed that it really drives you mad that certain commentators on Sky Sports well, most of them. Uh, all they do is they do, so they don't. All they say is things like, "Well, they'll be really glad if they score now." Oh, well, if they equalise now, they'll be back in the. I, said, I know they'll be back. In the, we know all these things. I, so I like that, Kevin. Apply. So send your CV to Sky. See what happens. Um, dare to dream of 12th place. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Can you does, imagine being in the first half count, of the table? Does that yeah? Does that count as top half finish? Yeah. Yeah. Come I, on. I dare to I dare to dream of rebuilding in the summer and seeing where we get to next year. Um, judging by the players that we've come in uh, have been brought mm. in this window, um, we haven't got like the first time Keats came in, he had to bring journeyman players and who was available. Isaac McLeod came in for a purpose. He wasn't necessarily the right player at the right time. And others others examples, he, he brought in players that could get him to where he wanted I think this time there's a couple of players in there obviously uh, Jarvis coming in 18 months Harris coming in 18 months uh, a couple of lads that on loan that perhaps we can have a look at um, uh, Keeler done on a sort of prove it sort of game, uh, sort of short term contract so I, I like what there is there's a lot of players that are up for renewal this time uh, whereas normally we're carrying a few players over to the, in the last couple of seasons we'll be carrying over so it's got he's got opportunity to you know, get players to see what they want to do, what he wants to do with them. Um, I mean, let's let's face it. The worst case is we don't want to get re we don't want to get relegated. That's the twelfth so twelfth place that I'll take. You never know if we go on a bit of a run. Um, the playoffs are still there because other teams are beating other teams. Look at Solly Huller on the on the down now. Maidenhead just beating them two 0 at their place. And you know, if we if we can get, there's always a team that comes through the ranks right at the last minute into the playoffs. No, there isn't. Well, it always seems to be. It occasionally is. Okay. It occasionally is, but it stands out. So let's occasionally hope that we do it. But yeah. and be, being realistic, yeah, I'd, I'd take a 12th 12, 12 place finish. I think this season uh, is all about not getting relegated and anything else is a bonus. Absolutely, 100% right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cal Riley, 08. Oh, is that Callum? Hello, Callum. Saying that Lainton played well today. Yeah, uh, had nothing to do for a lot of the time, but then those two saves from Reed at the end. The first one's a good tip over. The second one's an excellent tip over. That's come at him fast, doesn't it? The yeah. first one, I think, it's, he's done well, but I sort of expect him to to get a hand on that. The second one has flashed at him fast, and if he's not got quick hands there, then he's got a problem, hasn't he? Yeah. And Josh Hodgson as well, saying that Young's player of the season so far for me. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%, he's, he's the same miles player, um, with Lainton probably slightly behind him, um, but hasn't played as many games this year mm. uh, and the defence hasn't had as many clean sheets as it did last year but yeah, Young has been Mr Consistent Mr Standout player mm. and uh, is at the age where you can build a team around I think in midfield at this level and is capable of playing at the next level so yeah I, I agree and that mm. sort of links into um, Danny Dyer saying about um, Young, Pearson, Jennings pen to paper please Young definitely I think Pearson as far as I'm aware is on a two and a half year deal so he's still here for next year anyway I'm, th I'm sure he's into this is the he signed a two and a half year deal last season under Ricketts, so I that would have might been, be right. Yeah, so yeah. I, I believe he I believe he's under contract. So um, Pearson and Jennings are interesting, aren't they? Because that they, they were dipping a bit earlier in the season. Last few games, it looked like we right at it. I mean, we made Pearson man of the match last week. I know it's sad, but I have kept a list of. Um, a list of play of all the manner of matches we've done, just a, a tally, and it was interesting and a real surprise compared to the last two seasons when I realised that's the first time we've made him man of the match this season. Mm. Um, and we didn't discuss this. He'd I probably be my shout today. Yeah. I'm struggling to bring someone else up 
the raises above it. Well, funnily enough, the other Layton, one... Layton would be my second. Uh, yeah, Jennings did well. And again, you know, it's yeah, been Jennings erratic, but Jennings tried to carry the game forwards pretty yeah. well. You could see that unbalance on the two flanks, couldn't you, really, where Thompson didn't have the tools to do that in Jennings' days? Yeah, there wasn't a standout player in the attacking third, I don't mm. think, or midfield today. So, yeah, yeah. it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in that sort of area that there would be. Luckily, yeah. we didn't have a sunriser to, uh, <laughs> to to have that difficult decision. What do you guys think of the uh, the man of that? Uh, there's, there's our sort of thought. Get in touch if you agree with me. Sad to say, but Grant doesn't fit in the squad. Not missed him at all. Um, yeah, it's a sad case of... Rexman and Bobby Grant really I think it's yeah right player wrong time wrong system um, he had quality um, but it just never seemed to, to work it, I suppose coming from League One and having a career that he's had there's a lot of expectation on him as well to start with mm. um, I can't fault him for wanting to do it wanting to try his best and I think you might be able to see Mark now because the lights are about to go out <coughs> lucky you <laughs> Um but yeah, it never quite clicked for Bobby and uh, for whatever reason, whatever formation. I think he's one of those players that perhaps had lost the yard of pace to play as the wide striker that he was used to in his career. Mm. Isn't quite a centre midfielder. And then if you're going to play him as number 10, you have to build a squad around him. But then Jarvis has come in with a bit more... Um, you know, a bit more youthful fitness about him, and uh, and his linked play better. And I've only seen today in a couple of the highlights. So, yeah, I think it's... There's a lot of what ifs and could have been with not just Bobby Grant, with other players that Wrexham have signed over the years, whether they've been veterans coming down, youngsters with promise. And yeah, I don't, goal scorers have gone on and scored goals elsewhere. Players will fit in systems and clubs. Um, Gary Bennett, a fine example, going back for one we always used, didn't really do a great deal in terms of goal scoring until he came here and then, you know, couldn't, was unstoppable. And each club will have them. Um, and I wish him, I wish him well in, in his career and Wrexham move on. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. But um, uh, yeah. yeah, I hope he does do well. Um, I, I didn't like the way some people treated him here uh, in the crowd, as, as I've gone on record to say a few times. Uh, I don't think you could fault him for effort. Uh, but it's interesting. Accrington's one of his old clubs, isn't it? And they brought him back. Is that is that going to be a case of a club bringing in an old player because of the memory of what he was? Because I can't imagine they've looked closely at him playing for us. I, I can't see a team in their position thinking, oh yeah, that yeah. guy. Look at how he's playing for Axon. We'll bring him in. That's that's an interesting one. That and Maybe it wasn't a case. It wasn't a case of you know when Ian Rush came here a few years ago, and he was just a few steps ahead of the level of players we were we were at. He was playing balls that he'd be used to playing in. The, well, the Premier League, I suppose he did play in the Premier League for the last eight of his career. And it, it, so it, therefore, he didn't look quite up to speed, whereas mm. Bobby Grant wasn't that. It wasn't, he was playing at a different yeah. level to a certain extent. He wasn't that. I think the Ian Rush one's quite interesting. I, 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 my recollection of it is I wonder whether Flynn was saying that to keep his big name player a bit sweet as well. Possibly. I mean, because the truth of the matter is, he, I mean, he played a whole season with us and he scored zero goals. Because he'd lost his pace, and in that he'd lost an awful lot of what he was. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't disagree. I'm just there's, a, there's a little key. Yeah. A, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a again. Look, you know, we're sat next to each other. and We've got completely different <laughs> opinions at times, which is good. No, I'm no, I'm saying I'm no, 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 I, no, I just it, yeah. think. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the Flynn said that I think to, to save Rush's face a bit, or to make him feel happy, but the fact was he he, he genuinely didn't deliver either. You know. Uh, I've what? got an, that question about squad size. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm just going back up because there's been lots of um, questions coming on. So it's hard to go. Da, 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 da. Who do you think is the worst player this season? Oh. Well, I'm prepared for that one. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, I'm not going to name names. I'm just going to say um, you, your, my short list is contained if you have a look at the players in our squad who are available but not in the 16. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So although I understand why Danny Dyer has said Grant, to be fair, he's still our top scorer. He has delivered something. I, I think it's right that he's moved on, absolutely 100%, and I don't understand why Danny Dyer has nominated him. But there are players who've been brought in who should not have been brought in, and Keats has identified that and won't use them. And he'll put Max Clever on the bench ahead of some of them. How many players do we have in the squad? That's a good question. Nah, I, just, Again, I, I just counted it. Have you? Okay, yeah. I'm glad you're <coughs> this. We've got a surprisingly big squad. 
but the problem is we're not probably going to use some of them. So 25 okay. players. Now that's counting Cleworth. Obviously, we should do. He's on the bench. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also counting Matty Sargent, yeah. who is back now. He was the he's a spare man at Arrogus. Good player. Good player. I yeah. rate Matty. I think I, it's just probably the wrong time mm. to play him, unfortunately. But I, I, I do rate him. But then referring back to my other points, there's at least four players on the box at the moment that Keats is trying to move out. He hasn't managed to yet, and they. He won't pick them, I don't think, unless he has a massive crisis. <coughs> Sorry. But the fact that Cloweth's on the bench is an indication that even without Carrington and Jens being injured, he will want to loan in at least one more defender or sign a non-contract defender. Yeah. No, Even though Thompson has arrived, we're still short. If we're going to play three at the back, we still need at least one more body. And if Jennings or Carrington are injured for any length of time, two probably. For me, I wish I wish Horshield hadn't got injured. I thought oh, he was a great, great sign yeah. and looked uh, looked the part. Um, let's have a look elsewhere. Uh, how many players in the squad? We've done that. Mark, will you do any more Wrexham tracks? Well, I think you yes, filmed a couple, yes, yes. but uh, I've got one that I still haven't finished. <laughs> away at Woking, and it's yeah. quite good. I should quite enjoyed it. I need to try and get it finished. I don't have the time. I will definitely. But at the moment, I'm feeling until I've done that one, there's not much point in filming a new one, is there? Got this temptation to do that really annoy you, yeah, YouTube thing about asking, begging for likes and subscribes, and we get so many, you'll sing the song live. But I'm, I'm just not going to make you do it. I don't mind doing that. Oh well, okay. But then that go. takes away the fun of yeah. begging for likes and subscribes, doesn't it? Because they're like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, we're going to humiliate him by getting him to do something he just said he's willing." Oh, it'd be awful. Well, I'd hate that. <laughs> oh, I'd hate it so much. Well. <laughs> if, if we don't have another Wrexham track produced in the next, by the next few home games and perhaps that's an option we might have a right. live, live Rex track yeah, fair um, point okay Ryan Lowe at Argyle doing a top job Wrexham linked in the pass why can't we get these players from him uh, I assume you mean why can't we get the, those sort of players um, signed up <laughs> budget um, location there's lots of different reasons, you know. Let's look at let's look at yourself as a player, and you're available, not getting in the team. And Wrexham, yeah, it's quite a big draw in terms of name, but you've got to be realistic. Do players want to drop down to National League and battle in a team that potentially could be in a rele well is in a relegation fight and potentially could get relegated? That um, do they want to try you know travel from up north? Um, hundreds of miles from down south, hundreds of miles. It's it's a limit, um, and I think that's a realistic thing. Uh, Danny, are you saying Ryan Lowe won't do business with us? Um, so we're link we've been linked with him. Why can't we get players from him? Uh, is, oh, is that, that what the you're question? saying? I'm trying to work out. I'm, I'm not. I, if if that's the case, I think that's, that's how I'm reading it. Um, I'm thinking. That, like I say, firstly, ridiculous level yep. at this at this level of football, and um, they will still have certain areas that they know better than others. Yeah. So he's dipped into the Coventry well a couple of times. He's been working in the West Midlands. They know the character of those players. They maybe have a good contact in the club who can give yep. those recommendations. And if he hasn't got the recommend, that, that how many people from Plymouth on here is, is a question. There's a couple. Plymouth Reds needs to be launched mm -hmm. and um, sanctioned as a fans oh, uh, supporters yeah. group. Uh, founder members, Danny yeah. Dyer, and uh, who's the other one that we've just seen from Lee B. Lee B. And they, the bottom was talking about can we get loan players off him? He's clarifying because there's some good quality at Argyle and Lee B. Agreeing. Yeah, there is. Um, it's, again, it's location. Sometimes Luke Young is a fine example of someone that's moved um, up from you know an area that is so many clubs between National League mm. South, National League, uh, League Two, that sort of just circle round. But the Plymouth lads will be professionals anyway, probably on loan. Yeah. So it's already, and has pursued players that he maybe identified while I was at Walsall or early on at, at, the, at Wrexham. So he'll have clear pictures in his heads of certain particular players he wants who he thinks will fit what he wants to do so again you know, if, if Plymouth players aren't among obviously quite a few went out yesterday the mm. goalkeeper David Szczepaniak went out um, to Kevin Druids as Mark said there's, there's players not involved um, the loan window is still open um, and it depends I suppose if they want to sit on the bench or not even sit on the bench sit in the stands or, or get on the football pitch until the end of the season um, whilst it's a career and you're getting paid for it mm. um, football I imagine um, most players 
would like mm. to be out on that pitch playing. So I guess there's options. Uh, I don't know, but as for news, no. I mean, obviously it was a busy day yesterday with ins and outs. Um, and I think overall the, the window's been successful, the players in and the, yeah. uh, and the players, Keats has, has, has wanted to get out. And I think it's clear that, that the strategy remains what it was. Uh, you know, we can still loan players out and hopefully they have a deal which means their wages are off us. We can loan players out with a guarantee to buy yeah. afterwards. Um, and so I think he will just continue to say to certain players, there will be no place for you. Um, if you want to play football, you're going to have to move. Uh, the thing is, are they all on one-year contracts? I don't think they are. I think two-year contracts have been given to some players, yep. which might make them want to sit on an, an, a wage they're not earning um, rather yep. than move and play football, which is, you know, you know, as fans, we're all going to say that's depressing. You're lucky enough to be a professional footballer, get out there and play football. You should count your blessings, but they got to pay the mortgages and, and they are able to do that if they want to, aren't they? Yep. See Simon Cook's question at the very top there with uh, the emoji. Why are we playing one up front, home to uh, home to the team below us? It's a good question. I suppose yes, you'd like to be in more attacking, but then when we've played less than five at the back, we've looked a little bit at sea at times early in the season. Perhaps Keats has gone to this wing back system. It's seen results. It's seen three cleat sheets, cleat sheets on a row now, two wins and a draw. <laughs> Whilst, yes, it would be nice to play more. I, I do think he's starting to play the with Jarvis and Rutherford behind. He is trying to be more attacking. I'd like to see, personally, Hooper supported, but modern football seems to play one up front. I'm not a massive fan of it, but I understand um, some of it. Um, Don't listen to him. Don't listen <laughs> to him. He, he's, he's got this thing about modern football. Caveman football you want. I just, think, I, I, I just think non-league deserves a little bit more... Um, Workmanlike football at times. <laughs> it deserves it. All oh, right. Well, no, it, it's effect, it's effective mixed in, but yeah, um, one up top. Yeah, it, it's you don't change a winning team and the form. You find you find a formation that works with the the players you trust. Unfortunately, that's where we are. Um, striker wise, you've got Hooper. Pochinelli's come in. He's not obviously um, got on today, although he was, he was ready to come on one at uh, one point. Has had a couple of little five ten minute cameos. Uh, Altwell doesn't seem to be in the squad, so perhaps not in the uh, the reckoning. I don't know where's your where's your options and on what you're playing. Sometimes it's uh, that forces your hand. I I I'm afraid, Simon. I don't agree with the premise of your question, because playing one striker doesn't mean you're being defensive. Um, just as playing a three-man back line with wing backs doesn't mean you're being defensive. Um, it, it's formations are just a rough notion to hang players on anyway and th there's all sorts of different rules that can be played within that um, and I would say the opposite I would say the Woken game we absolutely spanked them we, we lived in their half and we're attacking them constantly we haven't played one up front to be cautious that team that um, you know Saunders and Morel put together the 98 points season I mean was that one man up front was it three men up front or four three three you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't think for a second Keats is trying to be negative. I do accept that when things aren't going your way and in strong winds this can happen, your forward starts getting a bit isolated. I would say in the first half of Arrogate, that happened when we were getting forced back. Hooper was left isolated, so I, I totally accept that. Um, but but no, I don't think for a second that the, that the one man up front system is supposed to be negative. I mean, look at... We've got Rutherford and Jarvis, and the idea is they'll get as close as they can, and then the wing backs will push up as high as they can, and then Young and Summerfield don't have to be holding midfielders, and they can drive on, and our back line pushes up, and it's supposed to be positive. But the problem is, with any system, if it at a point in a game where it's not working, it becomes a negative, doesn't it? That's that's the, the logic is that, yeah, yeah. Having one striker, centre backs aren't sure who to mark. There are three centre backs, one striker to mark. So if they're not sure who to mark. And then there's players maybe going wandering because they're a bit thick. Uh, you know, they can't read the game. And they start wandering about and then it creates little pockets of space and other players can run into. If you have two strikers pinning back three centre-backs, then that's dealt with. they got an extra man. The strikers have dealt with in the pocket. That's, Some, that's the theory. Sometimes poor recruiting comes back to bite you in the rear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. But, and this is no excuse, how many clubs, including ours, do you sign a player and think yes that's a good signing on paper and perhaps they are a decent player 
but then they don't quite fit in the dressing room or don't quite fit in on the ethos or it doesn't quite work out in the position. I mean, as Wrexham fans, we've seen it. Dean Saunders' season or spell, how many players did we go through? Brian Little, if you include Brian Little, hundreds of players came in and in, oh God, that was amazing, in, in and out yeah, yeah. the door. And I, I remember the, his first transfer window broke in 13. Yeah. Um, and and that's something. Charles Rob Duffy never started the game, uh, and we just started recruiting and oh, put <laughs> this player in, and yeah. oh, Christian Guillen will come in. He was he started UEFA Cup final or whatever. So he'll be a good right, and various other. It's, it's yeah, on paper and reality, and reality and paper are sometimes different. You'll sign a player yeah. with not the greatest record. Amari Patrick came with not a great goal and scoring record, mm. and was a good player for us. And he's earned his move. Um, yesterday he's got signed a permanent uh, permanent move. Was it to Carlisle? No. Oh, didn't he? I, didn't, I, don't, I don't look at the transfer deadline there. I try and hide in a bunker. No, he, he signed. He signed for. Uh, Except when GR is signed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it is what it is. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I think you, you have to, as a fan, really trust the, <laughs> trust the, the manager to bring in those players. But even if you know, Alex Ferguson brought in his fair fair sh- share of uh, duds over the years and. Um, Managers will continue to do so. It's probably not the best example, but yeah, it's frustrating at times. But you can only you you, you recruit to what you can get, and sometimes they're not might be not might not be your first, second, third, fourth, or fifth choice. That's how agents work. That's how clubs work. That's how players work. They'll tell you one thing and then push it back, mm-hmm. and then unfortunately you're short of a position in mid, uh, in a um, in a team and you need or a squad and you need to get that player in and someone comes available and you take that chance, don't you? So. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a very very difficult one. Lee B saying the problem with one up top is that it gives out a message you're afraid of the opposition and gives them a lift and puts an extra ten percent in them. Honestly, I don't agree. Lee, I, I I don't think in the game it's seen as that way. I I, I don't I don't think they think oh, only one striker. Yeah. It's just it's like chess tactics, different ways to try and outmaneuver the opposition. I get I get using the Premiership as an example. I don't think teams when they saw Drogba up front for Chelsea in those dominant years thought oh that gives me 10% lift I think that's you know scary yeah, yeah. now you're not maybe going to get that player at this level but there's a lot of teams that mm. seem to adopt this you know 4-3-3 three, three, or one man up top or, uh, and, and working hard it's so it's throughout the game so it, it's obviously effective mm. somewhere and uh, if you look at it you're right it's, uh, that Chelsea team's a really good example isn't it because like I said the, the tactics are notional you know the formation 4-3-3 four, three, three, is notional I mean but certainly although in that side, they had Duff and Robin, right, yep. the side of Drogba. And you wouldn't describe either of them as strikers, I don't think, in no. any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, was that a defensive formation? But, you know, I mean, it was very effective. And they, don't, they yep. say you, you don't want to be handling Drogba, do you? No. Um, so. We need to go soon. It's quite cold, don't it? Yes. Uh, 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 Danny Dyer is... I, I, I'll, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but surely if Oswell has three fees, that's an advantage, isn't it? <laughs> Stability in this sort of wind for a start. Can stand on two and shoot with a third. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think, to be fair, where's that comment that I've seen before? Uh, oh, can I can I wheel back as yeah, well, though, and say that, having said all that about one up front, I'm not trying to say that's the only way you can play it, and I like Reese GTR's point here. And he says the performance is there, but we just need to maybe put two players up front so someone else with Hooper... So he doesn't have to head the ball into space where no Wrexham player is. Now, yeah, I, I I see the logic of that. I can see Hooper being a player to play off somebody. When Patrick came in and we were playing three at the back, which can facilitate two up front, yeah. I, I thought, ooh, the idea of both of them trying to run in behind was exciting. Um, and I would say as well, you know, I'd be interested to have seen if Ponticelli had come on, who would have come off? Because Saying that, he though, could have just swapped Hooper off anyway and brought Ponticelli. So I think he was going to go two up front because... If the wind's like that and we are yep. pumping balls over and we've got two quick lads trying to get in behind, maybe that would, on the game like this, have worked. Maybe. Uh, saying that, I agree, I, I agree with what you're saying. Maybe change it around going in the game. But the, one of the worst performances I go back to was Aldershot. And we played two up front, that being Hooper and yeah, uh, yeah. Armari Patrick, yeah. and became obsessed with hitting a long ball and yeah. never never True. worked. So there you go. Yeah, that was just as effective. But mm. I'm going to finish on this one point. Uh, it's Reese GTR. And I think this sums up our opinion on the on the game as well. Conditions and results weren't the best, but not too a point, uh, not too disappointed about it all. Yeah, I think a point yeah. clean sheet. It continues momentum, but it's vital now that we push on um, with Chesterfield away mm-hmm. and uh, then into Torquay. We've got some, we can get some big points in these next two games. The whole spell of form 
yeah. I think is, is, is effective. So Three games unbeaten, three clean sheets. We'd rather have won this, but the conditions made it difficult, and I think we've got to be realistic and, and accept that. And Reese GTR judges our commentary well. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Stick with us. But on that note, bring your boots, Danny. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next podcast or the next radio broadcast. Adios, muchachos. Say again, everyone. Adios, muchachos. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sign off now. Adios, muchachos.